Writing and restrictions? On the left, Tom Braden. On the right, Fred Barnes. In the crossfire, Arthur Kropp, President, People for the American Way, and Phyllis Schlafly, President, Eagle Forum. Good evening. Welcome to Crossfire. There's more to this election than Bush and Dukakis. All over the country, the religious right is organizing to get spokesmen elected to local school boards so it can get rid of the filthy, sinful books it finds in the public schools. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. It's being challenged in 42 states. Obscene. Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. That's high on the list of challenged books. It's outrageous. At the bottom of this is a question of control. Do you as a parent have the right to determine what your children shall read in the schools or do we leave that to teachers and librarians whom we pay to do the job? Fred? Mr. Kropp, have, do you have children? No, I don't. So you don't have kids in school, and so I gather then that you've never experienced uh, something that millions of other parents have, including myself, when your kids bring home a book from school, from the library, or perhaps an assigned textbook that has something that you find offensive. It's either sexually explicit, insulting to your religion. You've never experienced that. Well, I graduated from public school. But you, but as a parent with a young child, you've never experienced uh, no, that but particular... No, well, wait, wait a minute, Tom. <laughs> oh, Tom, wait a minute now. But yet... People for the American Way every year puts out this report on, on supposedly on the freedom to learn, which attacks parents and seems to me, at least from reading it, challenges the right of parents to protect their children and complain to school boards and school librarians. What's wrong with parents injecting themselves into decision on what books their children read? Absolutely nothing. But, but just as Jerry Fowell doesn't represent all religion and just as Jesse Helms doesn't represent all patriotism, these people don't represent all parents. Uh, what we're talking about is one paranoid minority, uh, a group of people who are basically going in and trying to sabotage the public schools. Uh, instead of spinning records backwards to hear devil worshiping, they're looking between the lines of textbooks and saying the devil's there. Uh, in, instead of talking about the uh, Trilateralist Commission or the Council on Foreign Relations and talking about global conspiracies, they, look, they point at school teachers and textbook publishers and say they're the globalists, they're the people who are the conspiracy. It's, it's people who don't understand what public education means. It's the single most important institution in this country and you got a bunch of fanatics out there who are launching a full-scale attack and and aiming at political control nothing more Schlafly, nothing less. are you are you a fanatic no I'm not a fanatic but I hope people read your publication because it gives several too. hundred examples of the materials that parents are complaining about and basically they fall in seven groups there's school materials that are obsessed with profanity blasphemy and gutter language there's school materials that have the occult and Satanism there, there are materials go. that have Hinduism Eastern uh, religions and yoga transcendental meditation the fourth category is materials that have incest, uh, homosexuality, I, I have to say, the only person who's all obsessed with these now, things are you. They're all are in you? your group. It lists them one right after another. Well, let me fifth, ask wait you. a minute. The fifth category is the materials that have sexually explicit pa <laughs> uh, passages. The sixth one are the anti-parent materials that, that uh, have themes about uh, rebellion against parents. And the seventh category is materials that are okay but are not appropriate at the age at which they are given. Now, it is our position that parents have have their First Amendment right to complain about these, to expose them, to read them, to second-guess the poor judgment of teachers who've put these in the materials. And people like Mr. Croc are trying to deny us our First Amendment oh, right to tell true. us what Phyllis, is going Phyllis, on. Phyllis, in just a minute now. Let's take a couple of examples. Let's be specific. I thought that Catcher in the Rye was about living humbly, learning to live humbly for a cause. Why do you consider it obscene? I don't. I've never read it. And oh. I, that's right. Well, what, and I have what, no opinion about it. Well, I don't have any I books. Think, I think, no, 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 I didn't. I think you should read the books before you decide that they're but dirty. But I, I didn't decide that. Now, you missed, well, the whole, did? you missed the whole point. My point is that parents have every right to complain for the reason of their choice. And believe me, every parent in this country has got the right to supervise the kind of materials that are given to their own children. Can, can I just and say what you have is a little group of people who are trying to impo you. impose their views about incest, homosexuality, sex, profanity on captive audiences in the public school classroom. The problem in this country is not that too many parents are involved, it's that too little parents right, are involved. Right, and we're, we're trying right. to get parents involved 
all. So am I. You know, I say that. Well, that, you, well you don't try to get them involved by calling them censors and book burners and well, all listen, those ugly appetites. You, you talked that you about. You're out. the one who's obsessed with sex. Um, you're the one who's out there ta attacking sex education curriculum when Ronald Reagan's own Surgeon General takes an opposing view to that. That's what, you're Par the extremist parents, parents out there. Parents have the right to protect their children against these little groups of people who want to teach explicit sex in the classroom. Well, Let me ask you about, uh, Mr. Crop, about Catcher in the Rye. I've read it. I've allowed my daughters to read it. But what about a parent who objects to that book, which, which Tom, is actually about a troubled teenager? I, I didn't recognize your characterization of it. But... No way you a child wouldn't. comes home with that book and a parent objects to it. Shouldn't that child not be required to read that in school if Absolutely. the parent objects? The problem in, this, in these situations is not accommodation. Accommodation happens all the time. Uh, what, 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 when it does become a problem is when a parent says, not for my child, not for any child. I mean, that's what's happening in this country. Uh, you know, we're, we were involved uh, in a situation, well, I'll, I'll take something that's more familiar to you, your board member who in the Department of Education, single-handedly, and, and you talk about how we need values and morals in school, single-handedly stopped the funding of a program that talked about the Holocaust. Now, she said because... No, that's not true. Wait a minute, First wait a minute. She didn't make the Well, the Department of Education, it was, a, it was a DOE endorsed program. Yeah. She stopped yeah. the funding because she said it didn't provide balance because it didn't talk about the Nazi position. That is not you true. You defended her no, no. because you said that everything that program was psychologically manipulative. See, this is the conspiracy Look, that seems to be Everything you said is on. simply Ms. not Ms. true, and you're trying to avoid addressing the specific instances in your own report. Ms. Schlafly, have you read of mice and men, that's the one that is most challenged in 42 states. The assumption of your question is that somehow I have opposed that, and that is not true. Well, why is it that of mice and men is knocked by religious groups in 42 states and been banned in some? Uh, you can ask anybody who's opposing it. I don't happen to be one of those, I but see. my position Did is... Did you read it? I saw the movie and that was enough. Tom, I've read it. Let me it ask Mr. Crop about it. Pretty dirty, wasn't it? What if, what, if, what if most <laughs> parents in a school district wanted to ban that book from the school? Shouldn't they be able to tell the librarian, get that book out of there? Well, I, I think that when we get in the business of banning uh, books, uh, it's, it's bad. No, but we're talking about removing it from a school library. It would still be on sale in the local bookstore, I'm sure. Sure. I, I think that... Why don't you leave it to librarians? Look, That's what the they majority, get paid for. The majority of the people read. in the school district they read. don't Phyllis read. Phyllis doesn't read. The librarians read. They read no, all no, these books. Now, wait a minute. The librarians, decide. like the school teachers, are taxpayer-paid employees. Yeah. And my position is that anybody who's spending the taxpayer's money has got to put up with the rest of us looking over their shoulders, well, the second-guessing their school, judgment. Well, the librarians go to school, Phyllis, and they learn to read, and they read a great many books, Listen, and they Tom, learn criticism. I was a librarian before I was married, and I know all about libraries. But librarians are paid for by the taxpayers' money. And in our society, our citizens and parents have got a right to look over their shoulder and say, you committed bad judgment in giving my child this book. Well, I, I don't see under, understand why we can't have partnership in, the, in this whole deal. The public schools, because you're, you don't want a partnership. You don't want the public education officials, the people that who are trained to have any role in it. You want, no, that's, you are seeking that, control. That's not true. Right, but Mr. I do think that any parent has got the right to veto a book for his own child. And I and also think the rest that of the groups of parents have got a right to kick up a fuss and go to the school board and say, we think this was bad judgment right, in putting Ms. in these Ms. materials.